And this is actually a perfect opportunity for the allies to dragon shot their ass out of Europe. Skyrim memes are relevant again, right? Alright guys, prepare yourself because this video right here took literally hours to set up. It was excruciating. I just wanted to make sure I got every single detail right. There it is. I know. It's, it's beautiful. And obviously this is the only change I brought to the map because, well, clearly... It took a lot of work. Now, obviously, I'm just kidding. I know this doesn't look like much, and it's a, it seems like a stupid idea for a video. Maybe it is, but I can tell you right now, this completely changes the landscape, specifically in North America. I mean, now we have this huge communist power here. Yeah, that's probably going to bring a lot of tension. Now, if you're unfamiliar, Russia had control over this territory up until, I think, I think it was like 1867, and the Americans then bought it off them. I did not know that, obviously. I think you you know that. I had to Google that shit. Actually, another equally just terrifying possibility is what if the Soviets fall and Japan or the Nazis get hold of Alaska? Now, I don't know how likely that is, but it could happen. And already, we've got something strange in East Asia. Japan declared war on all of China. Obviously, you saw the Chinese United Front popped up. Except these guys aren't in it. Uh, and that's because of the conflict with Mao? I don't know. It's just kind of weird. Wow. Just look at the new recruitable population the Soviets now get from Alaska. Man, that, that's going to be very useful. There's already a big win for Stalin. They now have another foothold in Spain now. And Mao also peaced out. He took all this land. Wow. Okay, the PRC's off to a great start. I don't even know if it's okay to call them the PRC. Maybe... No, uh, I, I, it's, I think it's fine. I don't know what the hell's going on here. Benito's being... Benito, it's been two years, and Italy is still fighting for Ethiopia. Every time I think he's reached a new low, he always finds a way to prove me wrong. Oh man, okay, clearly with this massive communist force now in North America, it's uh, it's starting to appeal to some of these countries. Mexico has just chosen a side with the left. It's only a matter of time now. Finally, I didn't have anything to do with this. It took two years and five months to take out Ethiopia. I think that's a new record. And there you have it. That didn't take long at all. So Stalin declared war in Lithuania, and uh, they joined the Allies. We've got World War II in 1938. Ouch. And the Soviet AI is already not off to the best start. They need to get some stuff over here. And Italy's got a problem, because I guess Albania must have saw what happened in Africa, and they think they can take on the Italians alone. Well... I guess we'll see. But again, things continue to look really good for Stalin. I mean, even the Axis, the fascist powers that are going to be a big threat, are very divided in Europe. And the tide is slowly turning in Alaska. They've uh, actually started to take a little bit of Canadian territory. That's a start. That is got to be the worst thing that could happen right now. I, I think they'll be fine, but this is going to be a huge distraction. Yeah, I don't think this guy's ever actually won, or at least we haven't seen it yet. He he'll probably die here, but... He did join the Allies. Well, uh, bye Bulgaria. Yep, you guys probably won't survive this one. And I know Turkey formed the Sadabat Pact, so they'll expand a little bit. Again, this is not a very good sign. You know, there's always a chance that France goes communist, or they could just not even join the Allies. But yeah, this is like, worst case scenario. However, uh, this could definitely change everything. Wow, okay, the Germans just saved the Soviets. Stalin better give Adolf just a huge kiss right now. And honestly, I, I would pay big money to see that. Don't pretend like you wouldn't be all over that fanfiction. This kind of ruins everything. Kind of. Not really. Okay. Why? It definitely has something to do with, yeah, the US joining the three brothers. That is kind of a problem. Are they involved in a war? Oh yeah, obviously. Okay, I don't know why. I, I didn't expect that. Alright, this is pure chaos right now. You know what? As long as Stalin still controls Alaska, that's fine. This, this video won't be completely pointless. And luckily, this Russian uprising is over. So hopefully the Soviets focus on the North American front. This is also something I was really worried about. I wasn't sure if the Soviets would actually be able to get troops to Alaska. Looks like they're going to be fine. Okay, wh why would you do that? You're now going to be at war with the Axis. Oh, you stupid mustache man. Whew, oh, no, never mind. I, I don't know how they joined the Three Brothers, or actually how they went Democratic. That's strange. Okay, well, here's some more territory for you. Fuck, no, now I'm the stupid one. Okay. I, I take it back. I mean, you are still dumb. I am just equally dumb. I completely forgot that means you're now at war with the US. Okay, well, you can kiss Alaska goodbye. Oh boy, this should be a fun one. Okay, well, just keep in mind, Daddy Adolf is not going to be able to help you out this time. Actually, no, they could end up helping them out, depending on if Greece joins a faction, which... I think they will eventually. Beautiful, and it looks like the Soviets are gonna bring us a nice cameo from the Kims. Korea is about to fall. So you guys know I love alternative history, 
but there needs to be some sort of realism behind it. There are just some things in general that are a little too far-fetched. So for the Soviets, I believe this might be the final nail in the coffin. Uh, because the Chinese defeated the Japanese, they, uh, they dropped the whole Chinese United Front and just joined the Allies. That's a huge problem. I do want to mention, they're still barely holding on to this state, and uh, that's, that's all that matters. I, and I don't know what the hell this guy's doing. He needs to get his ass over here. It's kind of odd to see Poland declare war on Romania after uh, they actually just took out Hungary. That definitely won't be a fun front. Actually, you know what? It's going to be fine. You won't have to worry about that for much longer. Also, this is really minor, but kind of insane. I've never seen it happen before. It must have been a focus tree thing. Adolf gave a part of East Prussia to the Soviets, which is going to make a big difference for this Polish war. There you go. And now Stalin's going to get some help from Iran as they take out both Iraq and Turkey. Ah, oh, man, but this is going downhill real fast. You can always tell when the Soviet AI is not having a good time when Poland is pushing. Yeah, this is going to be a disaster. A Swedish civil war just popped up. They uh, immediately joined the Comintern, and they're just going to die immediately. And for the Germans, this has been a really interesting game. I, I don't see why, but they haven't even tried to push into France, even though they've been at war for several years now. I don't know what's happening. Either way, the fall of the Soviets is coming, and I'm actually really excited to see which countries take what. There's a lot of different places involved and lots of territory to go around. Now this though could definitely lead to some problems. A couple years down the line, uh, since Chinese Shrek Man is starting to lean towards fascism, yeah, yeah, that's that's definitely gonna be uh, bad. Stalin is dead. Here's the peace deal for the Soviets, and immediately I have to say I'm a little disappointed. This doesn't seem like a very interesting peace deal, but whatever, let's check it out. Yep, that's what I thought. Poland just kind of took everything, uh, although Russia is is back. A and you know what? They did actually get some very valuable land. Who wouldn't want this? Yeah, this kind of makes it all worth it. Of course, now the Germans are absolutely screwed. Yep, this is definitely not going to end well. Here's the peace deal for the Axis, which is mainly just between Mexico, uh, I guess Honduras, and Germany. All right, yep, uh, purely allied peace deal, just liberations and democracy's put in power. Oh, this is kind of a big deal though, because Germany went straight to the Three Brothers, as well as they didn't really lose any territory. That That's kind of nice. Now here's a good choice. Uh, this man is now leading France under a democracy. He's not a fascist dictator. No, he. I guess he must have been elected. The fall of Italy just occurred, and uh, obviously they were turned into a democracy, but they were allowed to keep Greece. Wow. It's all they really ever wanted, I guess. Just brings a tear to my eye. And I guess one by one, the US is just gonna start declaring war on South America, since that was one of the last few areas that hasn't been touched by faction. So a democratic Belgium just caused World War III by declaring war on Luxembourg, calling in the three brothers against the allies. Yeah, I didn't think this was actually gonna happen. And this is actually a perfect opportunity for the allies to drag and shot their ass out of Europe. Skyrim memes are relevant again, right? But here's the thing, the three brothers are gonna be absolutely fine in North America, uh, and then Russia's still safe somehow because they didn't get called in. Holy shit, okay, this literally just happened overnight. And this is a post-Axis world. Fascism has been destroyed, but no, n not not really. It's, it's making a comeback in the East. That's kind of terrifying. Now the Americans need to be careful because the Allies have somehow landed already in North America, just off the Yucatan Peninsula. Oh yeah, it's over. Yeah, taking on like basically the entire world at this point is something even the US shouldn't do. There's the peace deal, and essentially now just one faction controls most of the world. I mean, there are still a few holdouts, but uh, okay, uh, Brazil got some territory. That's nice. Iran as well. That's that's all really happened. And unfortunately, even though Poland has become a superpower, it doesn't really matter in the end because they're just way too close to the British. They're, I guess they're still pretty good friends. They still have their own faction, but no, they're not going to do anything else. I, I was really hoping they would. And here's one last look at the faction map mode. I, I think it's kind of nice because we haven't seen the Allies win in quite some time. They're also going to take out China because I guess the US declared war on them. They would have a chance if, if they weren't facing like half the world and maybe if Poland wasn't being boring. This is one of the strangest things though. I, I don't know how, but the Soviet Union has returned. They are now the Soviet Union too. It's the only thing I can think of that would be so much better than Despacito 2. And what I've learned here is, at least in this timeline, if the Soviets still controlled Alaska, well, that means the Allies would have gone after the Comintern instead of the Axis. Democracy would still prevail, just in a very different way. Obviously Stalin is dead, so they have just this random dude leading them. 
Okay, they're part of the Allies as well, and of course they've managed to keep one of the best territories of all time. It's clearly their favorite, because they managed to never let it go for this entire video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. And as always, big thanks to my Patreon supporters, Furry Cruz, Swiss Argo, KMT for China, Sister Fister, Jake Paul's My Daddy, Yeet God McNeckass, Maxi G, Tyler, Matthew Rembish, Caitlin Liu, Sean Spillman, Jens Love Disc, Bruce Furcation, Matthew E, William Bennett, King Solomon, Elijah Senpai, Kirby, Wyone, and Elfie C.